But also during that period of time, my goodness, I, I look back on it now, it's, it's just amazing when I look at the 60s in particular, just amazing. This is during the period of the civil rights movement rising to another level. And you had uh, the, uh, we went downtown to desegregate downtown. I, um, I, I, I was a juvenile. I, I can never forget it. So I'm proud to say I got arrested 11 times. And they, they would let us go. They'd arrest us and take us right down and let us go. That's how it happened, except those last three times. They put us in. <laughs> so, of course, now my next door neighbor was James Crumlin, the attorney, and he was already Johnny on the spot, and my daddy was already behind him, and boom. And then I look back now, and I, I'm curiously uh, I'm thinking, I'm saying, I can't ever tell, I can't ever remember my father saying, go down there and demonstrate. And at the same time, I never heard my father or mother say, don't demonstrate. Because mm -hmm. some parents were saying, don't you get involved in that mess? You know, is this sort of thing. So we were involved in that mess so to speak. This is when we were meeting at Quinn Chapel, the historical church. This is when my sister Beverly was elected as head of the youth uh, core group, uh, Congress of Racial Equality at the time. She was very much involved. Uh, my sister Velma uh, was involved, but she was a little older and she was getting ready to get married. She was on a track, but unfortunately her, her fiance uh, unexpectedly died from a heart attack. He was a physically fit guy, who knows. But that sort of got her off to going to school in another direction. My brother was uh, involved in his own way. So we were all in that piece. And that led to Fountain Ferry Park. That led to Tell uh, us about Fountain Blue Boar, uh, the Hassenauer. Mm -hmm. Well, it was nasty. It was, it was Fountain tough. Fountain Ferry was an amusement park here. Yeah, Fountain, Fountain Ferry was in the West End. Um, I'm trying to think of the place that's on that property now because there's housing on it now. But the, you know, when we were oh, down- Fontaine. Fontaine State. Yes, State. So when, when mm -hmm. we, well, that was the dude ranch where yeah. Fontaine State okay. was. There was a dude ranch that was found fair part. But, but back in those days, uh, if, if, when we were doing this downtown, it was almost like fun, you know? Uh, and here's another interesting point, I gotta point it out. We, when we would slip out of Central High School, uh, just before it was over, you couldn't find a teacher anywhere. Now think about that. It took me years to figure that one out. They knew what we were doing, but if they knew and downtown knew, they wouldn't have a job. But they weren't gonna stop us. So we would go, we'd slide out of school, you could hear a pin drop. Right down to Quinn Chapel, which was right down the street. Right down from Quinn Chapel, on down to uh, desegregating those movie theaters and all that stuff. And it was like a round robin. I mean, we, you know, not a problem. But when you got to places, I mean, it wasn't that we weren't, you know, hackled and all that. But when you got to places out there, like what, what, where Hassenauer's was, when we went out there, uh, when we went to Fountain Ferry Park, uh, and, the, and the initial uh, experience at Blue Boar, it was nasty. I mean, you know, rocks, spit. Now, Blue Boar and Hassan Hours, they were, they were restaurants. They were restaurants. Mm -hmm. uh, Blue Boar, I only went down there a couple times, uh, so I can't give you a full thing, but, but Fountain Ferry, uh, I mean, it was nasty. It was, it was nasty. Uh, I, that's all I think I can tell you. And uh, it was so nasty that, it, that sometimes uh, when we would finally leave, because we were taught nonviolent, not that I was nonviolent, but for that piece, and we would cut back through Shawnee Park. Back in those days, you didn't, Shawnee Park was basically white. You didn't come across Broadway uh, from where we were. So at that particular time, uh, we'd go back in the park and those guys would chase us through that park, you know, and it was, uh, was kind of dangerous, you know, so when the police were over there at Fountain Ferry and we were disbanding, it was like open season sort of thing, uh, if you came to that park. So we fixed that though, we just got us a, group of people stay in the park and when they came through after a couple of whippings they gave up on that tactic so it's, it's so it wasn't none violent all the time no I've, I've never I've never been uh, a violent person and I've never been a non-violent person <laughs> way through that okay that's what I was gonna say articulate that a little yeah. bit yeah well um, it's just if you know if somebody attacks me I'm gonna defend myself but in that environment uh, you didn't defend yourself you were trained not to do that, to take it. 
and you had to take it. That was a very difficult thing to do because I was brought up sort of like a warrior, you know. Mm -hmm. I was a little bitty guy. I probably lost 90% of my fights, but I'd fight. <laughs> but the thing is, is that in that situation, that would have been counterproductive to do that. And of course, the way the, um, the way the, uh, the powers that be were at that time, it would lean against you if you're talking about the police. I mean, they wasn't that they were all that friendly either because they weren't. Uh, so it was an interesting period of time. So that was that was a civil rights movement early on. 